So that beat you guys just heard in the introduction, uh, I'm really vibing with it, I'm really just feeling it. But as soon as I was gonna start adding bass to that track, I decided to turn on the camera and film this video since that is a question I get asked a lot. So in this video, I just wanna show you guys my method on how I add bass on top of sampled bass production. Now the way I do it, I'm sure there's so many other ways you guys can add bass, uh, but I'm not a musician. I don't play no instruments. I don't play no keyboard, no bass. I wish I did, and if you guys could play bass, then I'm sure it's gonna be a lot easier. But for those of us that don't understand keys and musical language, we just have to play it by ear and be able to feel a connection with the bass note that we're gonna add versus the sample. Now the reason why I said it's a little tricky when it comes down to samples is because if you're pitching up or down your sample, which I do a lot, uh, you're messing with the original key and it is no longer on that key that it was originally recorded at. So when I pitch up or down my samples and then I wanna add bass on top of that, it sometimes could be a hit or miss. So I'm gonna jump right into it and I'm gonna just show you guys how I do it. I have not practiced this, so I'm hoping this comes out good. And yeah, I just wanted to film this as I'm adding this bass note to this beat that I'm working on. So let's have a good time and let's jump right in. So when it comes down to sampled bass production, at least for me, I'm not always having to put a bass line on top. You know, sometimes it's just drums and sample. Uh, if the sample has a really good bass line already after I've chopped it up, I'll leave it. Um, there's a song that I just released last week. Uh, it's on my band camp. I'll leave a link down in the description. That track, I didn't add no bass line on top. I really liked what the sample had already. Now, not all samples will have a bass line or not all samples uh, bass line will be punching the way we want them to. So in that case, we will add a bass line on top of that sample. Like in this beat, uh, let's hear the sample. I really enjoy what I'm getting, but there's not enough bass for me to keep. since my love had gone. That's a pretty cool sample line, but again, I try to duplicate it and bring out the bass from that sample, but it just didn't work out. It's not always gonna work out like that. So right here I have uh, on track one is my sample, track two is my drums, and on track three, I'm gonna make track three my bass. So we'll name this bass. And on this program, I gotta make sure it's an empty program, which as we can see, there is an empty program. I don't wanna do it on chops or drums, I'm gonna just do it on program 001. That means that this program, there's nothing here, like there's, there's no samples there. So on this program, I'm gonna name this bass. Cool, so now I have track bass and program, I just called it bass. Uh, now I'm gonna go through and browse through my SD card and look for some good bass notes that I can use. What I like to do here, and I talked about this on a previous video, I'm gonna hit play on my sequence, so it's gonna loop, and as it's looping, I'm going to audition different bass hits and see which one matches the best to that sample. Uh, one thing I'm gonna mention before I jump into this section is that they're not gonna be in key, so let's understand that they're not gonna be in key, there's obviously gonna be off key because this is pitched differently, but what I'm trying to do here right now is I just wanna get whatever bass sample that I'm gonna load up here, to match as close as possible so I don't have to do too much pitching right now once I have it. So let's go to our browser. In our browser, I'm gonna go to this Marco Polo Pad Thai Volume 4. And uh, by the way, he has some awesome bass notes. Uh, if you guys don't have any of this, uh, go on Splice, uh, go on your Ableton and just look up for bass notes and sample them into your MPC. Uh, in this case, I'm gonna use uh, this Pad Thai um, sample pack. And as you guys can hear, I'm gonna just go through and you're gonna hear different notes. So there's just a simple bass hit. That's it, it's a one shot. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna hit play on that sequence. And as I hit play, we're gonna audition some of these and let's see which one matches the closest. All 
All right, so as you guys saw, I, I just got two uh, samples that I loaded in. I got those two uh, that are not in key with the sample, but they were close enough and the, the it just felt right to me. And I know I can pitch it up or down just a few semitones and I might be able to get it close to where I want it to be. But before uh, we go any further, as you guys uh, notice, if I hit this uh, sample, it continues to play. I don't want that. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna take that gate off. Let's go to our program editor. And on this program editor, I'm gonna make sure this whole entire program, I wanna make sure is uh, it's gonna affect the entire program, not just one of the pads. So in order to affect your entire program, you wanna hit this little uh, droplet icon up here. And right here from current pad, you wanna go to all. So now you hit close. So when we put this from one shot to note on, now when we hold down that pad, it's gonna play for as long as we're holding down that pad. When we let it go, it's gonna stop playing. Now that we've done that, uh, it's being right here on this program editor, let's go to this tab where it says samples. And on this samples tab, right here is where we will be able to uh, pitch this up or down a few semitones. As you guys can see right here, it says semi. Uh, but before I go to the note or the key that I'm gonna be in, like this bass note, as you guys can see, it detects it, it's on key A. Now don't worry about it, because I myself do not know, like, I mean, I don't know this is on G, I just know because the NPC is telling me. Uh, what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna go back to the main uh, sequencer right here, and let's go over to our sample. Now, this is really cool with the NPC. I don't know other machines, but I'm sure, uh, I hope they have it, but with the NPC, this is really cool because we're able to see what key this sample is at after we've pitched it up or down, which is really valuable. So what we'll do is on this sample track, I'm gonna go to menu and go to into our program editor, and I'm gonna just hit one of these uh, pads that I'm, that's on the sequence. So it's detecting this sample on G minor. As you guys can see, it shows it right there. So now I know, I gotta remember, this sample is on G minor, so if I go back to my main uh, sequencer, I'm gonna go back to my bass, and on my bass, let's go to our sample editor, and now I'm gonna click, let's say, this sample. This bass note is on A, but that sample loop is on G minor. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the semitone, like as you guys see, I'm selected right there. I'm gonna go down, you see as I went down, and now it, it shot me down to G. As you guys can see, as you guys go down a few semitones, it's, you know, it's giving you the key. That is, that's awesome. That's like really powerful. So now if I hit play, I should be able to hear the sample of, of, the, of the chops that I've done. And then when I hit this bass, it should match pretty close. I mean, it's probably not gonna be perfect, but it should be pretty close. See, this sounds really close. This one, I don't think I'm gonna use it. Again, I load up a few samples to see which one I'm gonna stick with. I'm just really not feeling this one as much, but I'm feeling how this one sounds. So I'm gonna stick with this one, and what I'm gonna do, I could even get it even closer to match the key of that sample. I could use the fine tune, and I can go up or down. I can probably drop it a few uh, notches down. Let's try it at about minus 12. That's really close. Now, is it perfectly in key? Maybe it's not. And some of you guys that are musicians here that understand music theory are probably gonna be like, yo, this guy's way off, but <laughs> it sounds good to me. It sounds close to me, so I'm gonna stick with that. So now we have a bass sample and we have our actual drums and sample. So hopefully this is making sense and it's coming along together. Uh, what I'm gonna do now that I have it matching in key now I can play with this. I can go up here where it says 16 levels. If I click 16 levels, it's gonna ask me, what do you want me to do? You know, velocity, tune, filter. We're gonna go to tune. And on tune, it's gonna ask you what original key is gonna be at. So what this is gonna happen is, as soon as I put it on tune, you guys will probably be default to A4. So A4, pad four, 
is gonna be your original sample. Anything below pad four is gonna be lower octaves. Anything above pad four is gonna be higher octaves. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this on pad uh, eight. I want pad eight to be my original uh, sample. So I have something to play with like lower octaves and higher octaves. So I, I don't know, I like being on pad eight. Hit close. And once we hit close, now we have We pretty much have our samples right here laid out and we can play out our baseline as we wish. So now when I hit play, I'm able to practice and see what feels right to me. Another trick that I, I should have mentioned and um, I do this sometimes but not all the time but I notice this is very helpful for a lot of us is when we go to a 16 velocity or 16 levels, if I go from original pad, if I go down to pad uh, four, I hit close, this is my original. But up here, there's like some higher octaves. So you guys notice that this is at a higher octave and this is the original octave. So obviously these sound, you know, I'm not gonna use these originally, but I can practice with these higher octaves because you can hear them better to see what melody you wanna lay down. So for an example, if I play this. So I can hear that. It's it's a lot easier to hear versus this. I mean, you can feel that, but it could be masking with the sample. So a lot of people like to pitch their bass uh, sample up so they can like practice. And once you get what, like right now, I just found this. I actually like that uh, sequence or that melody that I'm doing. So I'm gonna stick to that. So what I'm gonna do now that I found the melody, I'm gonna go back to 16 levels and I'm gonna pit, go back up to A8, to pad eight, to be the original pad, hit close, and now this is the same melody I was playing up there. So let's hear that. Again, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, and this track is working, and I like how it's sounding. But let's just say, even though you've tried to go to your program editor, you're trying to find the key, and this is a hit or miss. It's not always gonna work. It could say it's on key G, and then you match both of them up on the same key, and it just doesn't sound right. That has happened to me multiple times. And when that happens, you got two options. Either you leave your bass at, let's say, in this case, it was not matching, for example. What I would have done if it's not matching and I need this bass, I would leave the bass on, on uh, key G and I would go back to my sample and on my sample, I would try to match the sample to the bass. Hopefully that's making sense. So those are the two options you can go around. Either it works the way we just did it. If it doesn't, then I'll try to grab the sample and pitch it up or down to match the note, which does get things a little complicated because if you pitch it up too much, then it could start getting off key. Again, you know, it could get a little complicated, but it's never been the case that I have to pitch it up so much that it's kicking me off time. It, that never happens. It's usually just a few semitones and I'm okay with the timing. So let's go ahead and lay down this bass line. Awesome, so that's kind of how I go about it when it comes down to samples. Uh, it's not too complicated. Don't try to overcomplicate it. Again, us that are not musicians or musically trained, you know, you just have to use your ears. You gotta rely on the feeling of the bass and the sample. And if it feels right, we're gonna go with it. If it does not feel right, then obviously we're not gonna go with it. So hopefully this was helpful for some of you guys. Uh, if you guys have other tactics or other techniques, please let us know down in the comments because 
this is not the only way to do it. There's so many other different ways, but this is just what has worked for me. So let us know down in the comments if you guys got any input. If you guys made it to the end of this video, I highly appreciate you guys taking the time. Thank you so much. I'll catch y'all on our next video. Peace. Gone. Love has gone.